Hello and welcome friends, I'm Philip Magnus and today I will be talking about The Broken God, the third book in the Black Iron Legacy by Gareth Hanrahan. I really apologize if I did not pronounce that right, I hope I did. But anyway, I'm very excited to talk about this here dark fantasy, and it is indeed a darkly inventive tale, as James Islington said about the gutter prayer and I probably said something similar to that fact or wrote rather because that review and the review of the previous book The Shadow Saint both only exist as written reviews you can find them in my blog follow the links below anyway that's that doesn't matter right now let's talk about the Broken God. As I said, the third novel in the Black Iron Legacy series, The Broken God has awakened my slumbering love for dark, heart-wrenching fantasy. Following the tripartite armistice that saw Gerdon divided in three influence zones, la Berlin and Germany post-World War II, the precarious balance of three powers is all but sure to break under the manoeuvring of the powerful criminal syndicate of the Gerdana, its power-hungry dragons and its loyal scion, Raske. The cast of characters swells with new faces, some more devious than others, and Raske is not quite chief among them, but he is very close. This young chosen of the Gerdana he does a lot of manipulations, plenty of machinations, and they are a direct product of his almost rabid loyalty towards his family. It is a search for approval that I couldn't help but feel was fated to end badly. Ordered to take over the city's alchemical supply trade, and in case you are unfamiliar, totally unfamiliar with this series of novels, let me give you a, a very quick breakdown. Gerdon, a city of alchemists in the middle of, or rather trying to avoid, the so-called God's War, which we're going to get to in a bit. Spoilers, doesn't quite succeed, that's all I'm going to say. But anyway, the city lives and breeds on alchemical supply trade. And so Raske's task, given to him by his uncle, is to take over that. And to do that, he will allow nothing, absolutely nothing, no friends, no love, no loyalty to anything but the Gerdane, to stand in his way. And certainly not the uneasy truce that offers Gerdon a degree of peace and definitely not the defendants of that piece either. And least of all, not the voice of the new city, a voice that only Raske can at present hear. As for that voice, it is the last remnant of Spa, a familiar character to those of you who have read the Black Iron Legacy thus far, Spa's ability to hold on to parts of himself is slipping more and more, and that is something that returning main character and my personal badass of the book, Car Carolyn Tay, has travelled half the world to find a cure for her continually um, dissipating friend. The former Saint of Blades is not having an easy go of it, though. Far from Gerdon's new city, I quote, she's powerless, harmless as a fucking fly. Unquote. Unquote? What? Close quotes. Anyway, Carrie wasn't a major POV character in The Shadow Saint, just as Elodora isn't a major point of view character here, and to follow her once more is like coming home after years of wandering. It's a pleasure and a comfort. That's not to say that a lot of what she goes through isn't bonkers insane. That's what, that, that is t 
psychology, isn't it? Ah well, I like it. Some old friends, lots of backstory, and a new sorceress ally, whom I will forever ship with carry on, uh, show themselves and play very important parts in the book. Most horrific and exciting by far is seeing the God's War and what it has done to the outside world. The sections of the novel that deal with this are some of the most powerful in the Black Iron Legacy series thus far, through sheer force of imagination. Here's a good morsel for you. I quote, Carolyn and Miri risk being remade by these vanished gods. Both women are fortified against the touch of the divine, one through her sorcery, the other through the remnants of her sainthood, through her eldritch heritage, and both have enough willpower to resist direct assault by these diminished spirits. These gods are still perilous in an oblique manner. At times Carrie's attention strays from the dusty path, and alien thoughts infiltrate her mind. Once she imagines what it would be like to tear Miri's throat out with her teeth, to cow to howl and call her vanished pack. Another time she finds herself reciting poetry, her words so sweet that honey comes dripping from her mouth. She has the presence of mind to keep reciting for a few minutes after the fit fades, and Mary collects the honey so that they have something to eat. At least. There is more, so much more, that shows the boundless creativity Hanrahan is capable of, and it makes me eager to the point of desperation to see where the next novel goes. But that's far from the author's only strength. With Gareth Hanrahan's writing, there is this pervading feeling that no detail he includes is extraneous, no detail incidental. Both the political intrigue he weaves, here and like in The Shadow Saints, we leave behind the highbrow political intrigue for the sake of gangster dealings and spycraft. So both the political intrigue he weaves and the character work at display are impressive. That is exhibited well in the character arc of Bastion, who is a former lieutenant of the Brotherhood from the first book, whose progression turns the stomach. In a good way. By the novel's end, Gerdon is remade once more, the cost of Raske's ambitions having marked it in ways you'd never expect at the Broken Gods opening. What I want to find out most is... What's next? Will the peace hold? What of Kari and Elodora? What of Spar? And the Gods' War? It's only going to get worse. Much worse before it gets better, isn't it? Well, only time will tell. I don't know how many books there will be in this series, but maybe seven is in my head. I cannot wait for the next one. At present, it doesn't have a release date yet. I know that the author is also a writer for some fairly large role-playing game. Uh, handbooks, like the One Ring and so on and so forth, and reading something like The Broken God, it makes me really excited to just check out all that he's done in this other uh, system medium, if you will. Very different, but also one of the coolest things about The Broken God is that you can really feel the inspiration and the effect of the authors being so familiar with role-playing games. There are ideas here which feel very much the kind of bread and butter that really good dark fantasy lives and dies by, especially in collaborative storytelling, like all uh, tabletop role-playing games are, in effect. And one of my favorite things about The Broken God is that I can just grab concepts about the whole Black Iron Legacy series. I can just grab concepts and drop them into my D&D game, for example. And my players 
absolutely love them. I tried this with the crawling ones recently and I can't tell you how mm, how well it fit into my own homebrew world. But that's a conversation for another time. For now, I leave you with this, the latest hashtag Summer of Sequels video in the hopes that you, if you've never checked this series before, will find yourself inspired to, in fact, go and look up the Gutter Prayer, the first in the Black Iron Legacy series. Go and get The Shadow Saint, the second book, and absolutely order The Broken God, which I think is every bit as strong as the previous two, building up on that very solid foundation. And who knows what's next? I know I don't, but I'm excited to find out. See you next time. Bye!